Hey guys, what's up? I just got home from work and I wanted to turn the camera on and show you my heating system and cooling system that I just got installed this summer. And if you have solar or are planning on getting solar or maybe not planning on getting solar, this is a super efficient way to heat and cool a house without using oil. So let me, let me show you. Um, and yes, I still do have an oil tank because right now that does our hot water. And yes, I wanna get rid of it. I get scrutinized for having it, but I'm way over budget on our projects. This is what, um, this is what came with the house. So got to, uh, that's on my list of things to do. That does our hot water for the house. And yes, we are going to get rid of it. All right, so let me show you what we got going on over here. So this guy, is a Mitsubishi heat pump does heating and air conditioning I'm not a professional when it comes to these things a local company Rycor installed these for me gets super cold here in the Northeast and I believe this could still heat the house up to minus 30 that's pretty awesome it uh, this cools and heats my bedroom which is right up top there so the way our bedroom is set up the air hand the uh, the head on the wall actually is facing our door so it goes through the door and through the hallway and goes into uh, the spare bedroom and it kind of heats and cools the entire upstairs floor I believe this is a uh, 8,000 BTU system and this takes care of our upstairs. The entire house is 1,900 square feet. So right now we're getting by with the 8,000 BTU system as well as an 18,000 BTU system on the other side that does the whole downstairs of the house. So this is the one unit. You could see the, the pipe work that goes up top. We matched it with uh, the siding of the house as much as we can. And then I'll show you the other unit that we have over here. It does work. Uh, right now, we had a central AC system. It was an old system, pad mounted right here. You could see the pipe work coming out of the wall over there with the spray foam where we cut it off, ran our electrical wire through there. And this does, does the entire downstairs floor of the house. A cool thing that also works with this unit is you know this is here you have the one head on the inside of the wall and you know that's my living room this is the kitchen the foyer when you walk in the hallway the way we circulate the air is we use the central uh, the central ductwork with the fan and we turn the fan on and it circulates the air or the heat throughout the house from from the heat pump while we're out here I'll just show you the view that's our PV system up there. So I was always telling you guys the, uh, our roof is east facing and it's like a ski jump. There it is. So this is where our sun is rising in the morning through here, coming over the top. And we set right behind those trees over there. So right now, sun's setting and I should have brought my app out here to see how much power we're producing, but I'll see you guys, uh, see you guys in the basement. Hey, so we're back in the basement. Um, I actually found a cool video online about those heat pumps. So I'll play that now so you guys could check it out. And there's one mistake I made. I said that they work up to minus 30. It's actually minus 13 and it's called Mitsubishi hyper heat pump i believe it is hyper heat so this is a video of how those heat pumps work if you are wondering i actually learned a little bit of something from it too check it out mitsubishi electric's ultra efficient heat pump systems consist of an indoor air handling unit and an outdoor condensing unit which are connected via two refrigerant lines together they work to efficiently transfer the desired cooling or heating energy to your personalized comfort zones 
In summer, air conditioning is produced when heat energy from inside your home is absorbed by the system's refrigerant and transferred to the outdoor air. In winter, the refrigerant cycle is reversed, and the system extracts heat from the outdoor air and transfers it inside to heat your home. All right, so we're back here, and it's actually my solar backpack. If um, I don't know what you guys use for work or commuting and keeping your stuff, but these things are pretty cool. It's got the solar panel on the front. These are actually sun power cells. So it's got one, two, three, four cells on it. And then it's got this little, little battery pack uh, inside of it where you can plug all your devices in. So you open this pocket here and this plug goes into this battery pack and you just plug it in and it will, you can see just from the light in here, it's starting to, it's starting to charge. So uh, yeah, pretty cool for charging your cell phones and all that kind of stuff. But back to business. All right, so give you a little tour just so you could see our heating system. Um, also gonna upgrade the hot water system at some point once funds get rebuilt and all that kind of stuff. But that's our last thing and there's also a, a a hot water heat pump that's what i'm going to convert our our oil burner to so we could be fully fully electric um i'll just give you a little rundown of how we look today so i'm just going to turn our screen recording on and let me see what we have here and back to yesterday and today okay cool so we're looking at today we'll go through what our production looked like and where it kicked off. So today, our solar woke up at seven o'clock in the morning. Our peak of the day was at 11.15 and it dropped off at 12.30 in the afternoon. Our batteries were filled up again pretty earlier in the day. And then you could see the ripple effect the up and down, it looks like an earthquake thing where the Richter scale. So the batteries were filled up at 12.30 and I'll turn the storage on too. Actually, before I turn the storage on, I just wanna see what time the solar kicked off at. So right now it's 6.25 to 6.30. So it just seems like each day it's a couple minutes shorter than it was the day before. Obviously we're going into winter, but just crazy to see that when you look at it every single day on your production that the days are getting shorter. But the thing that's been kicking pretty good is our production. So our battery, you could see here, was filled up by uh, 1230. And at that point on, you know, as the home was using, it was drawing on the battery solar was producing, replenishing it. So we're using incremental amounts throughout uh, the rest of the day. So we probably actually at 1230 in the afternoon, that's probably as high sun as we're going to get for this time of the year. So our max production was 11.4 kW and that was at 1215. So that's pretty good. Um, we have 36 panels on the roof. Um, each panel is 360 watts, so 36 times 360. So we have a 12.9 kW system, so that sounds, that sounds about right for, for this time of the year. And then our storage kicked on fully. We're running off, you know, no more real bad, we weren't running off any solar power from 455 on the batteries took over so that's our update from today super short and sweet um, if you're considering uh, solar and you have extra production definitely the heat pumps are super efficient cool to look into um, definitely want to do your research on them find the right manufacturer for me looking into it I found a great local provider that installed the Mitsubishi unit so that's what I went with and uh, pretty, pretty cool, pretty cool units. Oh, Amber Alert, Deer Park, license plate, black Honda Civic, be on the lookout. Um, 
yeah, please <clears throat> keep the feedback coming. I really appreciate it. Someone wrote a comment today, which I thought was was interesting. Let me check here. It'd be pretty cool to to see what he said. Um, what's your average full day kilowatt hour usage for your house this time of the year? Um, and that's what we were looking at. We were at like roughly five to 15 kilowatt hours we were averaging. But also there's one side effect of going in off-grid mode with Tesla. Maybe I'm wrong in this, but you really can't see what your home is using because all of the CTs, uh, you know, you're running in off-grid mode. So it's tough to get the home's consumption. It's just not accurate right now. Cause if I look at home's consumption on here, it's got 0 0.6 and it really is 0 0.6 because we're running everything off solar and batteries. So when you're not connected to the grid, maybe I have a setting wrong on my CTs on the power walls, but right now I'm not able to track my exact home consumption um, that I'm having throughout the day. But I know from previous history that the home is using between five and 15 and I was able to see what our usage was when I was connected to the grid and all of my CTs and connections were right. I mean, right now we're running in off-grid mode. There's so many electronics and power that's being exchanged. And I'd really love to do a video on how important the Tesla gateway is. I mean, that Tesla gateway is managing all of our energy needs for the home. It's managing the solar power, it's managing our consumption, it's managing when to shut the solar system off and turn the batteries on and vice versa. It's truly amazing what that Tesla gateway is doing for home energy management. Um, all right, signing out, it's another day. Please like, please subscribe if you think this is worth it. Uh, your feedback is greatly appreciated. If there's other things you wanna see, I'm just getting home from, you know, get home from a long day and you're just trying to put something out that you think would be helpful and that I've went through through the summer and I know installing those mini split heat pumps upstairs where it was a part of the summer where you're doing your research and your investigation to see what are the best units to install, what's the best local company to go with to install them and those are, those are the units that we installed that were best for my home. So signing out, hope you guys had a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.